Good afternoon. I want to thank Epic for giving us the opportunity to talk to you guys. We have something we're really, really excited about. It's good to see a, a strong audience here because we think we know what you guys are struggling with and trying to do, and we think we have the answer for that. I'm David Waters. I'm responsible for our business and industry development at Cavernous. Um, I represent a, a very strong group of brilliant people, great people that have been building a spatial co-presence platform uh, for more than three years now. Um, we're here to tell you about how we're bringing um, a connection to that platform to the Unreal Engine ecosystem. Our very performant co-presence platform has a, a huge number of features that allow people to work together, to collaborate, to build digital twins, interact, interactive training, all kinds of these fun solutions. Um, but building a solution that utilizes that is very difficult. And so that's what we do at Cavernous with a full stack software as a service product. We also have platform as a service that you can work with us on to deploy your own co-present platforms or, or metaverse platforms. And you can use components of our technology as well. But that was always part of our business that was direct and, and not accessible to the Unreal Engine development community. We have good funding, strong company, um, and we think it's the time to connect Unreal Engine to the Cavernous platform or your own custom platforms. And so that's the opportunity. Collaborative solutions, interactive training with multiple people, digital twins, we could go on and on. The metaverse experiences are kind of the, the hot topic right now. But coming up quick is this idea of enterprise metaverses, where actual work gets done in a collaborative way, in a spatial co-presence way. So that is the opportunity for a lot of developers, a lot of partners. But it's really, really difficult. Multi-user, multiplayer is difficult by itself. But then you have to build the whole back end of the system that allows for high performance co-presence, that allows for persistence, that allows for journaled spaces with infinite undo and redo, that allows for the dynamic ingest of content that is fully encrypted end to end, that has enterprise class features such as user access management and user controls. So that is really, really difficult. And so we think that there's an opportunity to provide something very unique that allows the large number of Unreal Engine developers that are out there creating compelling tr trainings, com uh, creating compelling solutions, but they're all single user. Because that next step into a multi-user experience is difficult. And so we have the solution. It's the Cavernous Metaverse Connector. It's a drag and drop plugin for Unreal Engine, Unreal Engine 4 and 5, that allows you to add multi-user co-presence with a whole bunch of features to your existing applications or your new Unreal Engine projects. And sorry, <laughs> it's switching both machines, so I was looking at the wrong slide. So we have the answer the Metaverse connector from Cavernous. And so what can you do? So now suddenly we have a platform or you can deploy your own platform in partnership with us that allows many devices of all types to be spatially co-present within the same environment. Whether that's a Metaverse, whether that's an interactive training, whether that's a retail showroom of some sort, whether it's part of um, design and manufacturing process, whether it's a digital twin as part of an industrial process in, in big energy, or architectural visualization. So suddenly you can now be co-present in those experiences. Now when I say co-present, I mean high performance voice and video streaming. Fully licensed high performance voice and video streaming. I mean co-present in that three-dimensional space represented by some sort of avatar, which is completely configurable. That can be on the cloud, or very uniquely, it can be deployed on premise, behind firewalls, behind your own server infrastructure, 
on your customer's server infrastructure or deployed as your own cloud platform. And if drag and drop, low code, no code is not what you need, you need something much more sophisticated, elaborate, um, able to be highly configured to your existing systems, to your existing application, we have a full REST API and SDK that allows you to tie into the platform as a part of your project. Moving data in and out of the system, helping you to create things like highly functional digital twins, or getting analytical data out based on what's going on in a training or as part of a process or a system. We even have a very robust scripting engine that's part of the platform. So we have this, this great new ability to do drag and drop. I'm looking at the wrong slide again. Um, and so here is the Cavernous platform. And again, we've had an existing solution that was software as a service, or you could deploy as platform as a service. And so we had that on the left. Now we're bringing that to Unreal Engine. And when we started to do that, we started to think, do we build a client based on Unreal Engine that people have to you know, bring their data, bring their content into, put into their work pipeline? And we very quickly realized what you guys want and need is something that drops into your project, something that drops into Unreal Editor and allows you to be co-present in Unreal Editor with voice and video streaming. And so that's what we've decided to do. We focused on first coming to market with a plugin that we call the Cavernous Metaverse Connector. But the real power of the platform is everything that you're connecting to with that plugin. And so we have a full set of services that are part of our platform. I mentioned we have an API and an SDK that you can tap into those with even greater power and detail. Um, but there's all these collaborative features and collaborative metaphors, things that you typically want to do, such as screen sharing, desktop sharing, um, the ingest of content, 3D content, images, videos, putting annotations on things, um, real-time translation of, of text and, and dictated audio. And then underneath that, we have a set of microservices that are all about being a robust enterprise platform. Uh, encryption, user access to control, um, high performance streaming. We have connectors that allow you to tap into AI engines, and, and this is continuing to evolve these microservices. But the key is you, you don't have to know about all that stuff to use all of that stuff. And that's where the connector comes in. So this is a quick screenshot uh, from a pretty famous demo, which is the Broadleaf Forest demo. Uh, and we simply drop our connector into it, and now you're running around in that forest with multiple people. So I think the best use of our time is for me to go ahead and show you that in action live. I actually want to get crazy and uh, do it as a new project, which mousing is hard to do when you're <laughs> on stage with bright lights. OK, so I'm just going to launch this, and then I'll, uh, I'll keep talking a bit. So I think that's really important. This, is, this demo, this particular forest demo, is very compelling. It's Unreal Engine 5. It uses Nanite and Lumen and, and virtual uh, shadow maps. Uh, and uh, it's, if you've played with it yet, it's really, really compelling, right? And so we don't get in the way of any of that stuff. We simply drop right into it. So here is, you guys know this, that we're going to start a new project. And I'm going to go ahead and use probably one of the most popular templates there is, because everybody wants to have that third person character avatar. So I'm going to just go ahead and select that. And we'll just call it my project. Let me see, make sure I turn everything on that I want to turn on. And so while that's loading, Oh, it should go pretty fast. OK, so there's the normal third-person character template. Oh, we're good on time. OK, I'll stop rushing so much. Um, you guys know how this all, most of you know how this works. 
it's got its own game mode, but it really doesn't do much. Uh, the default settings for the HUD and everything. So if I hit play, then we're easily able to start running around on that level, right? And this is where it gets really difficult. Okay, now I want to make that multi-user. Multiplayer, multi-user. And then I want to add all of those things that I talked about, those features. I want to be able to ingest PDF documents. I want to be able to ingest images, movie files. I want to stream audio and video to the people I'm on the call with. Um, so your webcam or, or some sort of virtual camera. Um, I want to annotate on things. So let me go ahead and escape back out. And so now that I've started this project, I'm going to save and exit it. And I'm going to go to my desktop. And it's in here. And I'm going to remember where I put it. I'll just copy it from this other one. And so not doing a, an install from the marketplace, but eventually that's how you'll grab our plugin. I'm just doing it as a copy. Uh, that plugins directory just has our one cavernous core folder in it, which is our plugin. And now I'm going to restart the project. So there, it looks the same. In fact, uh, I'm not going to change anything in the game mode, so it'll act the same. So if I hit play, we're still just running around. Now, this particular project doesn't do anything uh, unique in the, in the game mode, so um, I'll just switch to ours. But I still want to be that third-person character. So there you see it. It's set. Um, we have our own character which downloads the avatar from our platform. We're able to connect into multiple sources of avatars, some of the popular ones that you've all heard about. So if you want people to, in their profile, dynamically set up their avatar, ingest their own 3D data as their avatar, we have that, we have support for that, that's part of our platform, and that would come down dynamically. But for the case of this demo, I want everybody to be the, the famous mannequin, the third person character. And so that's for me, the local me. And then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to specify what I want other people to be. And so we have this connector file where now, and I know it's hard to see, but I can add any number of character blueprints to what I want others in the space to be able to be as a part of my built-in project. And so in this case, um, I've already added that third-person character. But all I would do if I hadn't gra I grabbed the plugin from a directory I'd already played with, but that would be blank, and I would just add a new one. And I could pick anything here. Um, but in this case, I want them to be the third-person character. And so that is saved. And so now that I have um, our HUD, and you'll see why I have our HUD selected, it's not required. Uh, you can tap into our HUD features or use the, the content that we're putting into the HUD in your own HUD. So we're not dependent on any sort of user interface or HUD. Um, I've picked the standard third-person character template, and uh, the game mode uh, simply has something that triggers our login. Other than that, it's the standard project. And so here you see. So I have, I have not modified the third-person character template in any way other than picking our game mode for a shortcut. And I hit play, and I've already connected to the Cavernous platform. Now, this is just our standard login. This can be anything. Again, it, it, this is our cloud instance. It can be your own virtual private cloud. It can be on-premise. This particular login image you can change. You don't have to use ours. Um, how your users log in or how your customers' users log in is completely configurable. So I'm signing in. Now again, this user interface shows me the cavernous spaces that I currently either own 
or have access to because somebody has added me or invited me. But this user interface is just our example we provide. You can do anything you want here. You can have people automatically join a particular space. Let's say you're trying to build a persistent metaverse that's kind of a single source of truth town center. You can just have them join that every time. You don't have to have them picking spaces. This is more of an enterprise feature where you have different conference rooms, different work rooms. You can see we have some examples here. There's a conference room. Somebody was working on a business jet design and they have it in a room. Um, there's an auditorium where you can do presentations with lots of people. So these are kind of built-in templates that we have that I created spaces from. But I'm gonna join this one. And so the first thing you're gonna see is my good friend Anthony is in the space with me. So I've now added multi-user with fully animated avatars to the template project just by dragging and dropping our plugin into it. Anthony is the third person character because that's what I picked that I wanted the, all the avatars in the space to look like. Those can be anything. The other thing you should notice is there's dynamic content in here. This robot, this 3D robot came down from the platform. Oh, now Anthony's showing off. <laughs> so Anthony, my CEO and good friend is in the audience here. Anthony is on an iPad. He and I are connected to the same space in this case on our public cloud instance of the Cavernous platform. Anthony's turned on his camera. So I now have voice and video streaming. <coughs> Luckily, Anthony's muted, <laughs> so we're not getting a feedback loop. We now have voice yeah, and video streaming. <laughs> Stop it. We have voice and video streaming into the space. You can also see uh, there's a PDF in here. This is the slide deck that I may or may not have finished late last night. That's already in the space. This can be updated at any point. I could have done the slides from in here. Um, I think this is a good point to, to, a good chance to mention, we don't get in the way of anything that you're doing. If you're building a VR solution, it'll work just fine. If you're building an AR solution, it'll work just fine. Anthony likes to play around with AR on the tablet. Uh, we, our client that's on the iPad that he's using uh, supports through the window AR, and it's a pretty cool feature. If you're doing ray tracing, path tracing, we don't get in the way of, of any of that. What we're doing is adding very high performance multi-user co-presence. Oh, somebody else joined. Oh, it's Jeff. I can see it's Jeff because of his uh, profile picture over here on the right, the doc. And so, I don't think it's hyperbole to say that we've added an enormous amount of features that are part of a, a now four-year-old cavernous platform, but we added it to a brand new Unreal Engine project just using the template and dragging and dropping our connector into it. Anthony's at animating the chessboard. Anthony wrote something on this whiteboard, and he's annotating on the, the PDF. You can change materials. There's a whole set of things. We're, we can spend a whole session, a whole different session, on all the features that the Cavernous platform provides you. You can use as many or as little of them as you want. For some of you, voice and video streaming with co-presence, that's all you want, that's all you need. That's the easiest, quickest thing to, to just add to our project. you also notice that um, if I come out of full screen here, I can eject. And so I'm now in eject mode, and, but the co-presence still continues, right? So now you and I can join a space. We're doing collaborative game development, uh, collaborative sequence development, uh, collaborative 3D animation, real-time 3D animation, content creation, or virtual production planning. There's a lot of more and more uses of Unreal Editor where you're using Unreal Editor as the application and you want to be co-present with voice and video streaming, but you want to be able to make modifications to the platform. One of the more powerful aspects of the Cavernous platform is we have a whole property system. 
and you can build anything on top of that. It's fully customizable. And so we're in the process of connecting things like the sequencer sequences to that property system so that when I make changes to the sequence, the properties get transmitted over to you when we're in the same space and your sequence updates, right? And so now suddenly you have this very easy, very powerful collaborative content creation and development within Unreal Editor. So I'm going to go back in here. Uh, and you guys, if you can, start thinking about any questions you might have. I'm going to ask that if you do have questions, please step up to the mic. They're recording these sessions. And uh, they made it very clear. I've got to make sure you step up to the mic. So this kit, we can, so we have all these collaborative metaphors. Um, being, able, being able to annotate on things. Our particular clients, we tap into cloud services for things like dictation and automatic translation. We have like the, the particular mechanism we have tied into provides uh, over 25 different languages that you can automatically translate text in the space that's on a whiteboard or on an object or a 3D note. 3D notes, we have 3D notes. Um, you're able to change materials. You're able to move parts around. Uh, and all of these kind of things are based on our history as being a collaborative design platform. And that's evolved, evolved to be more and more about being spatially co-present and working together on any sort of thing. That might be an interactive training. Um, especially with the pandemic, interactive training especially with co-presence, with other people being there, because they have to witness you go through the training, or maybe they're certifying you, checking you out on something, or maybe it requires interaction. That market has really uh, gotten stronger, and so you can build interactive training solutions like that. You can imagine how easy it would be to start building up a, a true digital twin, being able to control things from inside the platform that are controlling real-world things outside of the platform. But one of the lowest hanging fruit and most compelling cases is like architectural design visualization, uh, especially with, with wonderful tools like Twin Motion and being able to move data from Twin Motion into Unreal Engine very easily, and all the DataSmith connectors that are there to get your content into uh, the platform. Well, now you want to be able to walk through those buildings together. You want to be able to follow each other. I can make you follow me with the Cavernous platform. I can point at things and highlight them, and they'll glow. I can have a pointer. I can uh, do all kinds of things like that, right? But you as developers, you as, as users even, can get access to that now by way of this drag and drop connector. So really quick, I want to show you how you can extend that out. And so I think I'll just jump right to the punchline. Everybody knows this demo. It's the world famous Matrix demo. Unreal Engine 5, Nanite, Lumen, so much more. Stuff it does, I don't even know what it's doing. Our plugin drops right into it. And so you can already see my local avatar knows who I am. You can see by the icons on the right that I'm connected in the space with other people. It's kind of a little hint <laughs> of what's coming. Um, but we don't change anything. You can see her, the Matrix Demos HUD is still there. We don't get in the way of that. Now, we added a component for the user webcams. Um, but you don't have to use that. You don't have to. It, it, all this is optional. And so one of the first things you're going to see as I'm walking down the street in the Matrix, uh, there's, our, there's our favorite little robot there. And so the matrix demo, by just dragging and dropping, did I mention drag and drop? You just drag the connector into your project, and suddenly the matrix demo now has dynamic 3D content. And 3D content you can, trans, you can ingest and translate in real, in using the cloud. So you have just like a 3D CAD model, or some 3D model from Sketchfab, or anywhere. You can ingest it live, and it shows up in the matrix. So there you saw the chessboard on the table. There's the Mars rover. 
just to kind of ram home the idea that you can ingest any sort of 3D content. We support over 35 different 3D file formats in the platform itself. But any of the obvious standard ones, you can bring your data over and bring them in. And so this was us last night getting ready for today. Uh, so you can see Anthony's there. Uh, my daughter, Sarah, is there. <laughs> but I'm just trying to emphasize with this particular video that it, even a project as complicated and as robust as the Matrix demo, it really is easy to add multi-user, to be co-present with each other, to have high performance voice and video streaming, again, fully licensed voice and video streaming, dynamic content ingest. I could load my PowerPoint slide deck for this presentation into the metaverse, or into the matrix, sorry. And so suddenly, like, the matrix can become your company conference room. <laughs> you can start to have actual meetings where you meet at a, at a particular street corner or in a front of a particular building to discuss a, a presentation, right? That's some of the lofty goals and ideas of, of metaverse solutions and enterprise of metaverse solutions. That Ducati bike right there, that is a, a scan, a 3D scan uh, of a bike, just ingest ionically. And so I'm gonna skip forward here. But the whole point of kind of playing this <laughs> is to just show that we don't get in the way of anything. So all the physics just works. We don't get in the way of it. We participate in it, I think is the better way to say that. Um, being able to take our avatar that you're walking around as, which is really the Matrix demo's avatar, um, we just latch onto it from a co-presence standpoint, from an information standpoint, and drive around in the car in that mode of the demo. We don't get in the way of any of that. I'm even going to go as far as to say I went over and I I grabbed the robot. The robot is in the cavernous space when I joined. It wasn't built into the demo. It's not baked in, is a good way to say it. And now I'm using the, <laughs> I'm using the robot to, to play with the physics. So our dynamic 3D content is as much a first class citizen of the scene graph, the, what's happening in the environment, as the stuff that was baked in to the executable. Right? So suddenly now you can have this combination of, I want to build these really photorealistic worlds, some of which is going to be static, some of which I'm going to bake into the client, and then a whole bunch of other things I'm going to bring down dynamically. Maybe it's the inventory of a store. Maybe it's the latest and greatest version of the Audi uh, convertible. Right. So now you have this this awesome decision you can make. Do I bake it in or do I bring it down dynamically? And none of this gets in the way of, of however your users are experiencing this. Are you serving them up by way of pixel streaming? We don't get in the way of that. Is it a local app because they want to use VR or they want the highest performance, highest quality experience possible? We work great with that. Yeah, there you can see I'm moving the object around. So because that's a dynamic object and wasn't baked into the matrix demo, I can move it around, change it, all that kind of fun stuff. Oh, and I think, yeah, so here's, here's the matrix's um, HUD, it's user interface. Again, all that stuff just works. Haven't modified a line of code at all. Haven't had to recompile anything. Just drag and drop our plugin into the matrix demo that I downloaded, and suddenly I have, for me and all my friends, a multi-user metaverse based on the matrix, I, I, based on the city sample scene. <laughs> all the lighting works, no issues there. <laughs> 